Hi everyone, in this lesson we're going to be looking at rational exponents. And first off, the definition of a rational exponent is just another way to write a radical expression. So you've probably seen many times something like the square root of 4. And we say the square root, but we don't really think about the fact that the index is a 2. That 2 is usually invisible, we just assume it's a 2. And so we just don't write it. But remember that there is an actual 2 there. And of course, this 4 is raised to the first power. So what we're talking about doing here is taking a radical and converting it to exponent form. So in this example, that would mean that we would have 4 raised to the 1 half power. So the square root of 4 and 4 to the 1 half both give you two, they mean the same thing. Let's take a look at that in the calculator. All right, so if we do the square root of four, or we do four raised to the one half power, we're gonna get the same thing. All right, so they mean the same thing. It's just one is in radical form and the other one is in exponential form. So here's some more examples. We had root 5. We would put that in exponential form. It would be 5 to the 1 half power. Or if we had the cube root of 7, that's the same as 7 to 1 third. Now, if we wanted to put the cube root of 7 in our calculator, let's try that. Let me show you how to do that. All right, we would go to math, and we would pick option number 4. And then we could do the cube root of 7. Or we could put in 7 raised to the one-third power. They mean the same thing. All right, so hopefully you're getting the idea. And then we have one more example here. x squared, the, the fifth root of x squared, is the same as x to the two-fifth power. So first side here on the left side, it says write each expression in radical form. So let's just go right down this column and do the odds. We have x to the 1 half power. That's the same as the square root of x to the first. And of course, we're used to seeing that just as the square root of x. The next one, we have the eighth root of x cubed. We have the fifth root of x cubed. And the last one, I'm going to rewrite that first in terms of a fraction. If you have a decimal and you want to put it in a fraction form and you're not really sure what to do, you can use your calculator. If we put 2.5 and then we want our calculators to convert that to a fraction, we would go to over to the math button. And we're just going to select that first one, fraction. And that's going to convert our decimal to a fraction for us. So we have x raised to the 5 halves power. So that would be the square root of x to the fifth. Or you could write that as just x to the fifth. You don't have to write the index of 2. Um, I'm just trying to show you and remind you that that's what we mean when no index is written. All right, let's take a look at this next column here. I'll do these in blue. Write each expression in exponential form. So now they're in radical form, and we want to write them in exponential form. So it may be helpful to, for you to put this 2 here. All right, the index is always going to be in our denominator. So this is our index that goes in the denominator, and the exponent of whatever's inside the radical is going to go in the numerator. Right. I don't like how this number 4 here is written, so I'm going to rewrite that. So first of all, um, what's inside is b to the 1 -fifth. This is b to the first in here, right? The index is 5, so the denominator is 5. We're raised to the first power inside there, so that's the numerator. And of course, that whole thing is squared. Now, when you have a power to a power, that means we're going to use multiplication. 
So we have one fifth squared, so that's going to be one fifth times two over one. That gives us two over five. The next one, the index is three, that goes in the denominator. The numerator is the power that the value inside is raised to, so that's x to the two thirds. And again, I'm going to clean up what's on the inside here. This is y to the one half power cubed. A power to a power means multiplication. So we're going to have y to the three halves. Right. Now, I should have mentioned at the start of this video, just as a little reminder, I do have a video to remind you on all the properties of exponents. I find this is one of those topics that is very difficult for students. So don't feel bad if you're struggling when we talk about these properties. Uh, properties of exponents and logarithms, which go hand in hand because logarithms are exponents. Those are two of the most difficult concepts for students to get during the Algebra 2 course year. So you may want to just, you know, go ahead and check that out before you continue watching the rest of this video. Or after this video, you may want to just check that out. All right, so in that video, we talk about properties of rational exponents. And this is just a reminder of all those properties. So let's talk about each one. If we're multiplying and we have the same bases, we add the exponents. So let's do an example. If we have um, x to the third times x squared, that would give us x to the fifth. All right, if we have an exponent outside parentheses, that exponent is going to apply to everything inside the parentheses. All right, so let's look at an example of that. So let's say we have x y squared cubed. All right, so that x really is to the first power. And that 3 is going to be multiplied by the 1, and the 3 would be multiplied by the 2. So when we apply that cube to what's inside the parentheses, we get 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and that takes care of that property. Another thing that really seems to confuse students a lot is if you have, you can't have answers left over that have negative exponents. If we have a negative exponent and it's in the numerator, because this, if you think about it, this is really a to the negative m over one, you have to move it to the denominator to make it positive. It's also true that if we had, let's say we had one over x to the negative 2, in order to get that positive, we would move it to the numerator. Right? So if it's negative and it's in the numerator, move it to the denominator and it will become positive. If it's negative in the denominator, move it to the numerator to make it positive. The next property here is division of exponents. When we have division and we have the same basis, we're going to use subtraction. So if we had, let's say, x cubed over x squared, that would be x to the 3 minus 2. So that would give us x to the first. All right. For the next one, when we have a power raised to a power, we're going to multiply. We did a little bit of that when we looked at this example. Let's look at another one. Okay. So 4 times 2 gives me 8. 4 times negative 1 gives me negative 4. And I can't have a negative exponent in my answer. So this would become, final answer here for that example would be x to the 8th over y to the 4th. And then the last one, if we have a fraction and we have an exponent outside, you're going to apply that exponent to both the numerator and the denominator. And that would become x to the fourth over y to the tenth. All right, so there's a lot with these. And, you know, it's just going to take a lot of practice and it takes time. And you just have to be really patient and just keep reminding yourself of all the different properties. 
So we're going to look at a bunch of examples now together. Um, what you may want to do is pause the video, try them on your own, and when you're ready, come back and watch me solve them. So it says, write in simplest form, your answer should contain only positive exponents. All right, so we have the 3 and the 4 here. We're going to multiply them, so that's going to give us 12. And then we have, we have two parts of this with x in it. So we have x squared and x to the negative 1. So it's going to be 2 plus a negative 1. When we're, when we're multiplying and we have the same bases, we add the exponents. And then we still have that y to the fourth. So if we clean that up, we end up with 12 x to the first, y to the fourth. And of course, you don't need to write the 1. You can if you want to, but you don't need to write that. So that's the first one. Let's take a look at number 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And we have n, 2 plus a negative 3. And then we have m to the 4th. Okay, that becomes 4n to the negative 1, m to the 4th. And we can't leave a negative exponent in our answer. So we're going to rewrite that. that n to the negative 1 is in the numerator, so we're going to move it to the denominator. And that takes care of number 2. All right, moving on to number 3. So if we look inside the parentheses, we see that m to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1, except for 0. 0 to the 0 power is undefined. So what do we have inside here? We really have, let's clean that up first, 2n, because m to the 0 power is just 1. Now we can multiply that exponent for each part of this term. So we're going to have 2 to the, we have 1 times negative 2. That gives me negative 2. And again, we have... 1 times negative 2, that gives me negative 2. Now, both of these are raised to the negative 2 power, so we want to move those to the denominator. So we're going to get 1 over 2 squared n squared. And we, of course, know that 2 squared is 4, so let's do 1 over 4 n squared. All right, moving on to number 4, we're going to take that 3, we're going to multiply it by the 1, 3 by the 1, and then the 3 times the 3 for each of those. So we're going to get 2, 1 times 3 is 3, a to the 1 times 3 is 3, there's exponents of 1s here, b to the 3 times 3 is 9. All right, the only thing really more we could do here is we know that 2 cubed is 8. And I think 8 looks nicer than 2 cubed, so I'm going to write that as 8 a cubed b to the ninth. All right, now we have division of exponents with number 5. So anything that has the same base, we're going to use subtraction. All right, so we're going to have a to the 1 minus 4. There's really nothing we can do with that b to the 4th, so we're just going to leave it there. All right, then we end up with a to the negative 3 over b to the 4th. And remember, we can't have a negative exponent in our answer, so we're going to have to move that to the denominator. So that becomes 1 over a cubed b to the fourth. All right, let's see what we have next. All right, so we do have, the first part of this is really a fraction. We have one half. This part right here is one half. So I'm going to write that first. And then I have u to the 3 minus a negative 4. I have u here, 
and I have this part is u, and then I have v to the negative 2 minus 1, because there's a 1 here. So let's put that in like a green. v to the negative 2 minus 1. So that really looks pretty hideous right now. Let's clean that up. So we end up with 1 half u to the 7th v to the negative 3. And of course, u to the 7th is in the numerator, and we have to move that v to the negative 3 to the denominator to make it positive. So our final answer would be u to the 7th over 2v cubed. Okay, so first of all, we have 3 divided by 3. That's just 1. Then we have m to the negative 3 over n to the 4th. We're going to move m to the negative 3, so it will become positive. So our final answer is 1 over n to the 4th, m cubed. Okay, the next one we have... 4 over 1, because there's a 1 here, right? So this is 4. x to the 1 minus a negative 3. y to the negative 1 minus a negative 2. Don't do the plus plus thing, too, that I see happening a lot. Because you, when you do that, you're erasing your work from the step previous. Just, just leave it like this, and then in the next step, clean up that minus minus. So we have 4x to the 1 plus 3, that's 4. And then we have negative 1 plus 2, so that gives us y to the first. Okay, number 9. We have 2 over 1, that's 2. x to the second minus a negative 4 y to the fourth minus three, that becomes two, x to the sixth, y to the first. Last one, we have two over one. We have nothing in the numerator for x to the x, for a base of x, so that just stays in the, new, in the denominator. And then we have y to the negative 2 minus a negative 4. Okay, that becomes 2y, negative 2 plus 4 is 2 over x to the 4th. Now, if you struggled with these a little, I would just recommend doing them all again. Just try them one more time. Don't, you know, don't look at the answers work through them. It's great practice. It doesn't matter that they're the same problems. Try them again. It'll really be worth your time. All right, so this says, which of the following, where A and B are rational numbers, represent appropriate properties of rational exponents? And this is a great type of problem because it's really forcing you to look at one side and see if you can transform it to look like the right, you know, the other side. So we're going to simplify the left side of each of these, and we're going to see if it does indeed equal the right side. All right, so we've got x to the 0 minus a negative 1. So that becomes x to the first. Well, x to the first does not equal x to the negative 1, right? That's that side. They don't equal, so that would be no. Again, we're just going to be looking now at the left side and see what happens. So on the left side here, we have 2 squared, x squared, when we apply that exponent of 2, times 2x. Well, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. And then we have x to the second plus 1. So that becomes 8x cubed. And it looks like that does equal the right side this time. 8x cubed equals 8x cubed. So that's a big yes. 
Moving on to number three, we have x to the a times, because when it's power to a power, it's multiplication. Well, it looks like what's going to happen here is we're going to cross off the a's, and we're going to end up with x to the b. And that does equal the right side of the equation. This one is a yes. I would try number four and five on your own. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. Okay, for this one, we have uh, two times negative one is negative two. And six times negative one is negative six. That gives us x to the negative two minus a negative six, which is x to the fourth. Now, another way you could have done that, all right? You could have done, let me rewrite it. And then maybe it would have been better to do it this way, is clean up what's inside the parentheses first. So we're gonna get inside the parentheses, x to the second minus six to the negative one power. That gives me x to the negative four to the negative one power which is x to the fourth. So either way, we got x to the fourth. Um, it's just whatever you prefer. Neither was wrong. Um, I think probably it's good practice to work inside the parentheses first and then apply what's outside the parentheses, but you wouldn't be wrong either way. And of course they do equal x to the fourth. This means that the left side does equal the right side. So that's a yes. And the last one, we have x squared plus 1 half. That's 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2 if we have common denominators, or you could use your calculator. And we're going to get x to the 5 halves. And x to the 5 halves does not equal just plain old x, so this one is a no. Okay, everyone, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.